Welcome, I'm Dr. Eloise Mayer discussing today a technological solution for cybersecurity within South Africa, the Lost Packet Warehousing Service. Briefly, our talk today will discuss a brief introduction on why we're looking into this kind of technology, the technical design of the Lost Packet Warehousing um, Service, strategic benefits and the potential impact not only from a CSR perspective, but also within uh, the South African context, and then we'll just conclude with some final remarks. So let's set the stage for this um, presentation today. Cyber attacks. Why is it important? Essentially, a cyber attack is an assault launched by cyber cr criminals. It's really deliberate actions caused by cyber criminals to either degrade, destroy, disrupt or deceive our information systems, networks or even just the information residing on these systems. Why do we see such a rise in cyber attacks? Essentially, it's because we're seeing an increase in the attack surface within our cyber domain. And that's primarily due to a high dependency on IT infrastructure. I think we're all aware with the arrival of COVID-19, meetings are now taking place online. We are really relying on our IT infrastructure to do our day-to-day -day operations. Also, digitalization moving processes from manual to more digital um, formats. The proliferation of IoT, Internet of Things, devices, they're basically everywhere today. And more importantly, the fourth industrial revolution, where we're seeing now the boundaries being becoming blurred between digital, um, biological and physical environments. Essentially, it's not a question of will you suffer a cyber attack, rather a question of when. But let's look at cyber attacks from a South African perspective. Essentially, South Africa, even though we're at the bottom of the African continent, we're not immune to cyber attacks. Really, in the last year or so, there's been a significant increase in cyber attacks within our country, especially well-known and well-established companies, organizations have fallen victim to very experienced cyber attacks. If we look back about a year, we've seen the city of Johannesburg hit by a cyber attack. Essentially what happened, there was a network breach that um, showed a ransom note being delivered to the city of Johannesburg by hackers called or going by the name of shadow kill hackers. And essentially COJ, just as a precautionary me measurement, needed to shut down all their customer-facing web applications and websites, e-service and billing systems, just to make sure and to contain uh, this attack. Shortly thereafter, um, SABRIC, so South African Banking uh, Risk Information Center, also um, revealed a significant distributed denial of service attack that hit the um, banking industry shortly after this uh, attack on city of Johannesburg. And although the impact wasn't as severe, essentially what happened was is the hackers sent um, a significant number of emails to all the public email addresses and really degraded the availability of service within the banking industry. But unfortunately it didn't end there and with the arrival of COVID, more and more um, attacks became prominent and we saw with the live healthcare group they also suffered some attack although the information wasn't really revealed in detail they had to shut down some of their pro, uh, business processing systems and email servers and um, that had some problems due to this attack then finally and perhaps the most significant in recent times was the Experian the credit bureau um, company that uh, suffered a severe um, data breach in August this year, where about 24 million pers um, information of um, individuals within South Africa, as well as about 800,000 companies, were exposed to a potential fraudster. So, I think just by reviewing these few um, cyber attacks, it's clear that South Africa is not immune, and these kind of attacks must become a wake-up call, not only for South Africans, but all organizations within our country. We need suitable defenses to prevent, detect and defend ourselves against these cyber attacks. 
cyber attacks have been identified to follow a certain pattern. And to the answer to defend against these attacks lies within the data of these attacks. Chief um, Executive Officer of Kaspersky Labs, Eugene Kaspersky, based on the recent attacks within South Africa, uh, believes that these sudden increases in cyber attacks is basically due to an um, inadequate investment in cybersecurity, and he expects these attacks to continue. So we need to improve our defenses. And at this point, that brings me to the lost packet warehousing service. This is essentially a technological solution, South African focus, that will enable the passive but continuous collection of cybersecurity data. This is the data that we need to identify attacks. If we can collect this cybersecurity data, we can identify, detect, predict emerging threats as well as cyber attacks. Cyber attacks. Now one might wonder why not use third-party um, providers of such data that is readily available. Well firstly the data provided is often restricted. There is no control. It might also be limited in what we really require from a South African perspective. These um, data sets are known to have very little or even no presence from a South African perspective. And therefore, we now propose the lost packet warehousing service as to function as the primary source of cybersecurity data within South Africa. So let's delve a bit deeper into the solution by looking at the technical design. At the core is the data sensors that will allow us to collect the data. We need to enable the adequate collection of cybersecurity data. Therefore, we need sufficient collection, we will need various and distributed data sensors to make sure that we do collect enough cybersecurity data. So at this first iteration of this technological solution, we'll look into deploying honeypots, network telescopes, as well as look at NetFlow data. So let's look at each of these um, data sources a bit more deeper. Firstly, honeypots. For those that are not aware, it's essentially a service that masquerades as a vulnerable service or host to solicit bidirectional communication. So it doesn't really offer any legitimate services or applications and therefore all activity captured by these honeypots are deemed unauthorized and potentially malicious. It's ideal for capturing malware, vulnerability exploitation, credentials used during attacks, as well as the attack techniques. For our service, we're looking at deploying open source honeypots that are readily available. So we'll look at HoneyD, which is a low interaction virtual honeypot that creates and simulates hosts on a network. We'll look at Kipo. It emulates a SSH service that will allow to capture authentication credentials during brute force attacks. Glassstop which is emulates a web server and vulnerable web service applications. And then finally, Liabird, which is a high interaction honeypot that actually exposes real vulnerable applications. Next up is our network telescope. Network telescope is essentially a portion of rooted but unallocated IP address space. There's no running services and on this available space, so one expects to see very little traffic. However, there are a few exceptions. Firstly, they call it backscatter traffic, which is essentially a result of distributed denial of service attacks um, that will cause certain responses that will um, generate traffic within this environment. Next up, traffic created by misconfigured hosts. And then finally, aggressive or potentially hostile traffic. So with a network telescope, we can monitor for unexpected traffic. We can look at distributed denial of service attacks, as well as internet-based worms or viruses. Next up is our NetFlow collectors. Now, NetFlow is essentially a protocol that was developed 
and patented by Cisco in 1996. It provides the ability to collect IP network traffic as it in enters and exits an interface. So with NetFlow, you can actually record the entire flow, which will include the destination and source IP address, the destination and source port address, as well as layer free protocol, class of service and various other properties. Once that flow finishes, the NetFlow data is exported to a NetFlow collector, which will receive, um, collect pre and do some pre-processing on this data and then store it for later analysis. It's a widely used monitoring tool and it allows to evaluate network behavior as well as monitoring network usage. And more importantly, especially from the perspective from the loss packed warehousing service, it will allow to perform security and attack detection. With the sensors identified, the deployment and actual architectural design of the loss packed warehousing service is of critical importance. Placement and deployment of these data sen sensors will really determine the success of the solution. They must operate at the national level. We want to view these attacks from a South African perspective. Um, and also, the sensors must enable adequate coverage and collection of cybersecurity data. Therefore, we're looking to collaborate with SUNREN, the National Research and Education Network of South Africa. Now, SUNREN provides the backbone infrastructure and network connectivity and services for tertiary education networks as well as research councils within South Africa. They form part of South Africa's national cyber inf infrastructure, making it a probable target for cyber attacks. By collaborating with SUNREN will allow us to, to make sure we enable the adequate and enough collection of cybersecurity data. So looking into our architecture, what we'll see is that with SunRen, they actually provide 13 NetFlow enabled um, exporters that we can utilize to collect no NetFlow data. Also, due to their size and um, coverage within South Africa, SunRen can also enable us to establish uh, an allocated IP space where we can deploy our network telescope to collect cybersecurity data. And then, lastly, with our honeypots, we're looking to deploy them on local cloud server providers, also with operating within South Africa to enable that South African perspective with the collection of the cybersecurity data. Also, one might ask, now you've got all this data, what is the next step? And that will involve data analysis and processing, where we will look at doing data exportation from all of these data um, sensors that we've deployed, We'll do data reduction, extracting the relevant data, normalization of the data that will enable us to do correlation as well as do necessary analysis. And then finally, visualization of the data, which is really critical to enable us to look for that emerging threats and cyber attack trends. Then finally, a very important point, and one might wonder, what about security and privacy, especially since we're working with cybersecurity data? Any data collected by the loss package a warehousing service falls under the Poppy Act. Why? IP, MAC addresses, workstation numbers, all of this information when used together can actually be used to identify an in a specific user or individual. Therefore, the guidelines provided by the Poppy Act will closely be adhered to with the development of this service. We will also be taking adequate steps to ensure that the data is secure and anonymized um, where necessary. And then, very important, the data collected here, the focus will be only on the identification of potential cyber attacks. So with the technical discussions behind, I will now hand over to my fellow colleague and research group leader, Dr. Nuluntu Mpekwa, to talk a bit more about the strategic benefit and impact that this new technology can have, not only for the CSR, but within South Africa as well. Thank you so much.
Hi everyone. Uh, thanks, Heloise, for your presentation, your part of your presentation. As she has said, I'm Nolundum Pegwa. I will be talking about the benefits and the impact that this kind of project would, uh, would benefit from. So just to recap on what Heloise had said, there is no way that we can talk about cyber attacks and not talk about cyber security. So cyber security is not an option, but the only option. The National Institute of Standards and Technology defines cyber security as the process of protecting information and preventing and detecting and responding to attacks. One would say data is king, or otherwise one would say Data is the new currency. Um, the digitalization of our society is radically changing the manner in which computer systems are used. Now, a huge proportion of the population is continuously connected to the internet using a number of different services. Whilst making use of these services, we are permanently exposed, exposed to attacks uh, our sensitive data may be stolen, it may be modified, or even destroyed. We also live with the risk of mistakenly or irreversibly leaking our own private information on the internet. The economical and societal damage um, of successful cyber attacks may be consider considerable. Now, Cybersecurity has thus become a concern for everyone. Now, maybe for all citizens, for all professionals, for all politicians, as well as de decision makers in, in their own organizations and different uh, places of work. And let's be honest, we can never completely eliminate risk. We can only minimize and mitigate it. So we need to ensure with all our might that our data or information is always protected. The benefits and the impact that this project uh, we could benefit from. Uh, firstly, strong cyber defense to better detect, to deter, and to respond to cyber threats. Secondly, prevent loss of data or information which could directly or indirectly cause the loss of life. Thirdly, improve awareness and protective measures. Uh, and lastly, allow collaborations. I think Dr. Hello has mentioned that we would be collaborating with a number of organizations. These could be nationally as well as internationally at all levels, local government and uh, at a national level. Now, analysis of attacks over the years has revealed that cybersecurity criminals or uh, cyber attackers, they work together, they collaborate, say they share information. Now, it's quite important for us to understand that for us to be able to work against them, we need to collaborate. We need to be able to share this information in order for us to combat um, cyber attacks. Next in our benefits, um, cybersecurity business is to benefit as well. The important thing here to note is that cybersecurity business would grow and prosper. Nature, by nurturing our own homegrown expertise to generate jobs and growth uh, and support new business models, markets, and investments. Another benefit that we could get from this kind of project, this will allow our business to develop and build cybersecurity tools that are contextualized within our own environment. I think Dr. Heloiz did mention that most of the third parties that are out there currently that we can use to buy their data are based in the US, and that means that the data that they have is based from information from US. But for us to be able to build tools that can work for us, they need to have information and background 
from our context, which is South Africa. Another benefit would be to assist in developing contextualized cybersecurity awareness and digital literacy programs. You get a number of questions from a number of people that is uh, e-banking, online banking suitable? Is it secure? We need to be able to say from this data, what are the issues that are coming out that we need to be aware of? The citizens, um, how do we train them? How do we make them aware of what they need to know in terms of using this World Wide Web? Shortage of skills in cybersecurity professionals. New cybersecurity skills will be developed through this project. And there's a high possibility that the researchers who will be working in this project might do um, skills transfer to new and younger soldiers who we will equip equip for the digital age. Then how do we benefit as a country? Why should we take or why should we embark on this project? Why would we benefit as South Africa? One, it will provide an informative prima on the relevant issues the country faces um, in relation to cybersecurity. Secondly, the project, if the project would spread throughout the country, it will provide an understanding where the country is most vulnerable and assist us in taking proactive actions, not reactive actions. Thirdly, help improve national cybersecurity cyber policies and the implementation of, this, of those policies thereof. Uh, this includes laws governing the use of technology and the internet. And lastly, this, we see it as a long-term investment and a long-term project that would assist in the economy of the country as everyone would benefit by it. We should also be cognizant that cybersecurity is an investment whose benefits are often hard to grasp. Um, as it is, it only pays off when an attack that could have otherwise succeeded fails. And this is difficult to measure. In conclusion, I would like to leave with a quote by Anthony Wong, who is the president of the ACS. And he said in 2016, protecting that upon which we depend should be front of mind for government, for business, industry, academia, and every individual with a smartphone in their pocket. So if you have a smartphone, that means this is for you. So in conclusion, this project is proposing a technology that will detect deter and be able to prevent cyber attacks. Thank you for listening and uh, now we will open for questions and any questions that we can take now, we'll do that uh, online, via email or any other platform you would like.